So after like a good week or two of me uploading Giant Size X-Men number one on my channel, I saw that a few people did like that video. That you guys out there who did like that video had me wondering, okay, maybe I should give them another X-Men video. If there are people out there who are liking my X-Men videos, why not give them more? And so my goal in this video right here is to sit down and talk about the next story after Giant Size X-Men number one. Now, if you are a well-known X-Men fan, I mean you know almost every single detail of X-Men comics. You know who dies in this story right here. In Uncanny X-Men number 94 and Uncanny X-Men number 95. You know who dies in this story right here. But if you do not know who dies in this story right here, well, watch this video and you will see who dies in this storyline right here. Now, if you did see my last video, then you already know who dies in this storyline. But either way, here we go. Uncanny X-Men number 94 and number 95, A Death of an X-Men. So this story, it starts off where Giant Size X-Men number 1 left off at. You have the new and the old X-Men going home to Charles Xavier. Now, back in the 1970s, when that book ended, you have fans wondering back then, okay, will, it, will there be 13 people on the X-Men team? That was everybody thought right there. Because Giant Size X-Men closed with them saying, how can we have a team full of 13 people? And so you have fans wondering back then, will the X-Men have 13 people on their team? Here's the thing. Chris Claremont and Marvel, they said, no, we are not going to have a 13 team full of X-Men. No, we are going to kick out all of the old X-Men and keep the new X-Men characters. Because back in the 1970s, fans loved the new X-Men more than the old X-Men. You had Storm, Wolverine, Colossus. You know, Banshee was somewhat popular in the 1970s. And so you have fans back then saying, hey, we're okay with this. Go ahead and get rid of the old X-Men. And hey, Marvel did that. Because in the opening pages, you have Sunfire saying, listen, I told you guys I will only help you guys once. I'm going back home to my country. Because the thing is, I hate mutants. Even though I am a mutant, I hate the mutant race. And I hate helping mutants. And so I'm going to go back home. And so Sunfire, he went back home. He's done. He's out. And so that left Charles Xavier saying, well, hey, at least I still have the old X-Men and the new X-Men. But as soon as he said that, Angel's all like, listen, Charles, we are also leaving. You have taught us almost every single thing you can. And the thing is, I think it's time for the old X-Men to leave. It's time for us to graduate, basically, and move on with our lives. So Angel, Jean Grey, Iceman, Havoc, Polaris, they all said, we're done. You have a new X-Men team. And the thing is, they can take over for us. And so that happens. Now get this. You do have Jean Grey trying to convince Cyclops that he should go with her. They are in love. But here's the thing right here. Cyclops says, I can never live a normal life. Jean Grey, you can. Your powers, you can mostly control your powers. Angel, you can control your powers too. You can hide your powers better than mine. Iceman, you too. My brother Havoc can also control his powers. Polaris, you can also control your powers. But when it comes to me, I can never control my powers. Gene, I will always be 
in X-Men. And so you have Cyclops basically telling her, we will still be a couple. I will still see you. I will still always love you. But no, I am not going to go home with you. I'm going to stay here with Charles Xavier and the new X-Men team. Okay, so the next part of the story is somewhat important because after Cyclops says goodbye to all his old friends, the old X-Men, he says, okay, it is time for me to start training the new X-Men. They must be ready for anything to happen in the future. And so I need to sit down and start training the new X-Men before anything happens to them in, on a future mission. And so that is Cyclops' goal, to sit down and train the new X-Men. And the thing is, he does that. He takes the X-Men down to the danger room to start training them. Now, this part right here is really important because Thunderbird, one of the new X-Men, is basically is being rude to Cyclops. He believes that Cyclops should not be the leader of the X-Men. Also, he wants to prove that to all the other X-Men that Native Americans are just as strong as Caucasian X-Men characters. And so, it's him trying to show that he is a true Native American warrior. That he can be powerful as a Caucasian or African or any other kind of race. He's trying to show the world that Native Americans are strong just like any other race. But here's the thing right here. Cyclops says, I'm not trying to be rude to you, Thunderbird. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to make you better. You might think you know how to fight. You might think you know how to survive. But you might not know every single thing. And my goal is to help you learn every single thing you can so you can survive and also be a reliable source for the team now they go back and forth cyclops thunderbird they argue back and forth and luckily charles xavier breaks them up and says listen you two go your separate ways because right now we do not need that on the team we do not need two hotheads arguing back and forth over something this small there are more important things out there to worry about and so now we jump to the next part of the story where we go to Colorado the Rocky Mountains because we find out that the US government has some kind of secret base hidden inside the Rocky Mountains in this mountain they work on different kinds of projects for example nuclear devices and so right now to them it's a normal day they are working on another big project now one employee in this office he does get some random mail and he's all like who's it from they tell him we don't know all we know it has your name on it and so he says okay i'm going to sit down and open this package now Honestly, this part right here is dumb because he opens the package up and it says, press this button right here. He's like, okay, sure, I will press this button. And so he does that. Now, with him pressing that button, it does open up a portal, a portal that let these random creatures come through. These creatures are basically half human, half animal. And they are basically right now attacking the whole U.S. government base. They are beating every single member up. Guards, scientists, you name it, they're getting beat up right now in this base. But here's the thing right here. We come to find out that the anti-men or these weird animal creatures, they are not the main problem. They are basically henchmen. The man that almost everybody should be worried about is a guy named Count Nefera. I'm pretty sure I just mispronounced his name. But Count Nefera is really an Avenger bad guy, but he has also fought the X-Men too. 
And so we come to find out that Count Nefera is here to basically hold the world ransom. He tells the world, listen, if you do not give me money that I am asking for, I will fire one of these nuclear devices in this secret U.S. government base at you and basically wipe you off the planet. I will kill millions of people if you do not give me the money I am asking for. And so it's him right now holding the world ransom. He's telling everybody in the world that I will basically kill you people if I don't get the money I want. Now, we come to learn that almost every other superhero team out there, they're all busy right now. They cannot help stop this man. And so it comes down to the X-Men. So Cyclops says, all right, it's time to show the world the new X-Men team. Cyclops, Storm, Colossus, Wolverine, Banshee, Nightcrawler, and Thunderbird. It's time to show the world the new X-Men team and show them what we got. And so we see the new X-Men team basically go towards Count Nefera in the Rocky Mountains hoping to defeat him. Now, when they get there, they come to find out that there's some kind of weird device in there that's right now in a countdown. And if the X-Men don't get in there and stop that device, basically it's all over. Every single nuclear device will go off or fire across the world. And so you have the X-Men now like, okay, we have to get inside that mountain. If we don't, it's going to be a very bad day for Earth. Now, here's the thing right here. When they get close to the mountains, Count Nefera, he sees them. He's like, okay, the X-Men are here. They're here to stop me again. I will not let that happen. And so Count Nefera basically fires some smaller, low-grade missiles at the X-Men in their X-Jet and basically blows up the X-Plane, leaving the X-Men falling to their death. And so with the X-Men falling to their death, it's kind of like, okay, somebody might die here. Someone is, is supposed to die in this story. So who's going to die right here? Well, Chris Claremont, he says, no, that's too easy. That's too easy to kill somebody. So no, no one's going to die at this point of the story. In fact, he's going to use Storm and Banshee, the two people on the team who can fly to save the X-Men lives, to save Cyclops, Nightcrawler, Wolverine, and Thunderbird. Colossus, don't worry about him. He just basically turned into his human form to survive the impact. But Chris Claremont, he's saying no. This point of story is too easy to kill someone. So no, keep reading to find out who is going to die by the end of this story. Now, and you have the group basically regrouping. They're saying, okay, we must stop Count Nefera before that countdown reaches zero. Because if that countdown reaches zero, we're going to have a huge problem. All those missiles in there, all those nuclear missiles, they're going to go off. We must stop those missiles before they go off. And so you have the X-Men basically breaking into the U.S. government base to get to Count Nefera. Now, I am going to skip a few pages because in those few pages, it's just the X-Men fighting against different obstacles to get to Count Nefera. For example, they fight mind control guards. They fight the half animal, half human creatures to get to Count Nefera. They are basically fighting their way to this man to stop him before all these nuclear bombs go off. Now, at this point, the X-Men, they do stop Count Nefera. They do stop the countdown from going off. But get this right here. Count Nefera, he escapes. He leaves the room, leaving the X-Men thinking that he got away because he goes down and finds a jet that can get him away 
from the X-Men so he can come back in a later story. But this is where Chris Claremont says, all right, someone is going to die right here in this story. And the man who dies is Thunderbird because Thunderbird basically says, no, this guy, this super villain, Count Nefera, has put us through so much problems in the past hour. He basically blew up our jet. We had to fight mind control guards. We had to fight half human, half animal creatures. No, he will not get away. And so you have Thunderbird basically jumping on the plane that Count Nefera is trying to use to get away from the X-Men. And basically you have Thunderbird punching at the plane, trying to bring it down. And he's all like, I will not let you get away. I will show, I will show Charles Xavier, Cyclops, and the rest of the X-Men that I am a true warrior. That I belong in this world. That the world will know me as a hero. And so he's just smashing away at the plane, hoping to bring it down. You have Banshee telling him, dude, let it go. Get off the plane. The plane is going to crash. And when it crashes, you will die. So you have Banshee screaming at him. You have Cyclops and the rest of the X-Men out there looking at their friend falling down with this plane, about to die, wondering, will this man get off the plane in time to survive? But here's the thing right here, guys. He doesn't. The plane crashes, and it kills Thunderbird. We have a death in the X-Men family. Charles Xavier, he's at home, and he realizes that one of his X-Men just died today. Cyclops and the rest of the X-Men look at the crash site to see that their friend Thunderbird is now dead. And that's the end of the story. The death of an X-Men. It takes place in Uncanny X-Men number 94 and number 95. But anyways... I'm going to go ahead and end today's video. Please leave me a like down below and also subscribe for more comic book videos daily. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, old and new, let me know in the comments below because you never know. Your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But anyways, I'm out of here and I will see y'all on the next X-Men or any other comic book video. Have a good day. Later.